Good morning and welcome to the regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Public Works for Friday, June 17, 2016. Commissioner Davis, Rodriguez, repenting and assent to our present. Pres Vice President Rodriguez, we have a quorum. May we start with uh, Bureau of Introduction, starting with Bureau of Engineering. Good morning, Chris Johnson, Bureau of Engineering. Good morning, Russ Drizella, Bureau of Contract Administration. Good morning, Ruben Flamenco, Bureau of Street Lighting. Good morning, Mark Simon, Bureau of Street Services. Good morning, Mark Starr, Bureau of Sanitation. Good morning, Ted Jordan, Public Works General Counsel. Fernando Campos, Executive Officer. Vice President Rodriguez, we do not have any speaker cards under general public comment, nor any of the comments for the Neighborhood Council, nor any of the regular items for today's agenda. Okay, so we'll go ahead and close general public comment, uh, which takes us to our first item of business, which is the approval of the meeting minutes for the meeting of, Mon I'm sorry, for the meeting of May 25th, 2016. Is there a second to my motion to approve those minutes by Commissioner Repetting? Uh, those minutes will be approved. Uh, our first uh, item this morning is the certificate of recognition for Angie de los Reyes and Vicky Santiago and Commissioner Jacinto, if you would please. Uh, there. there you go. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Vicky Santiago, Director of Office of Accounting. Uh, we're here to present to you uh, our one of our best person in the Office of Accounting, Angelina de los Reyes, for the certificate of recognition. But before I go into that, uh, please give me a chance to introduce this, my staff who are supporting her. Uh, they are all here today. Can you please stand up? My staff are actually my number one asset in the organization. I work through them. And they are all good. I'm very lucky to have a very good staff in the Office of Accounting. And your chance will come one at a time for this rec uh, same type of recognition. Um, I would like to introduce uh, Yolanda Antonio, the direct uh, supervisor of Angelina de las Reyes. Um, can you come here, Yoli? She will talk about Yolanda, but before that, um, uh, Angelina actually is a co-worker of mine when I first entered as an accountant into the city. Uh, I started with CDD, Community Development Department at that time, and uh, she was one of my mentors when I was new in the city. So uh, I'll give the floor to Yolanda. Um, good morning, commissioners and bureau heads, and to all the attendees of our meeting today. Um, Angie has been working with me for quite a number of years now, and we all know that with the with the board of, with the public works where the only department has the Merlin report and I, we know and we could very well say that um, Andrew really f uh, utilized the Merlin um, ad hoc reporting and it really helped us as well as with her helping out um, her other um, colleagues to use it fully just so we have a, a very fast and um, accurate reconciliations of the funds that we handled and with that also we are able to provide a full uh, a full accounting and uh, transparency of the work that we do and with angie she has this um, notion where she has if you have the talent use it not just a hundred percent but give it a hundred ten percent and this she does not keep it to herself but she always makes sure that she shares it with her um fellow employees so with that uh, we're really grateful to have angelina de los reyes in our group thank you okay great angie before we give you this and thank you vicky um Colleagues, you know, good morning. This is a special moment. We just celebrated Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, one of our diversity heritage months for the city of Los Angeles. In a city as great as Los Angeles, we understand that it's built on, on the diversity, on the travels, on the presence of so many different communities. And I'm so glad to see our accounting, uh, so much of our city family here to test uh, testify to be witness to your service, Angie. Um, and we did a wonderful thing this uh, this past month, but it really, it pales in comparison to every day the job that our bureau staff, our dedicated city staff do day in and day out, year in, year out, not just one month, but every day of their lives. And so together with our staff here, I'm, I'm pleased to present this certificate of recognition from the Board of Public Works, and it's signed by all our commissioners to 
Angelina de los Reyes. What? How fitting is that? Angelina <laughs> City. And we might be relatives because my, my mother's last name is Angeles. So, so you are an angel in the city of angels. A city, an angel of kings uh, is what you are. In grateful appreciation for your dedication, your generous support, and commitment to excellence, Angelina. Your attention to detail and integrity provide accounting efficiency and transparency and to our Mayor Eric Garcetti's um, back to basics agenda about a well-run government, Angelina de los Reyes manifests that. So I would like all of you to uh, join me in giving the certificate of recognition in this great honor to Angelina de los Reyes. Good morning to everyone. I would like to express my heartfelt thanks to each and everyone here for this certificate. Thank you. Thank you, Angie. Thank you. Thank you. Did, um, Commissioner Jacinto, did we want to take a quick photo? Yes. Please, can we do that? Angie? What would be an award without a photo? We'll take a quick photo. So just hang tight. And to our colleagues in the accounting department that all came down for Angie this morning, we just want to thank you so much for all your work and for being here to support each other. Thank you. Okay, um, agenda item number one is recommend, the Bureau of Engineering recommending the board authorize the city engineer to issue a revision of task order solicitation number 270 to Calvin R. A. and Associates, DBA, AHBE, Landscape Architects, to provide landscape architectural design and related consulting services in connection with the Alpine Recreation Center expansion increasing the budget authority from 410000 to $435,000. Rebecca Abano. Good morning, commissioners, bureau heads. Rebecca Abano with the Bureau of Engineering. Um, what I have before you is to request authority to issue a revised task order 270 to increase the authority from from $410,000 to $435,000. The fees and what Abi does is the, they do the design services for the Alpine Recreational Center expansion, which is also known as the Ordinale Street Park. Um, this is a new park in the city, which is, we're building a new park in a blithe, vacant piece of property behind the Chinatown Branch Library. In front of you are renderings that Abi prepared for the project. Okay, and the reason for the increase is um, during the design process, you know, we do estimates to keep the project within budget. We reached a point in the design where uh, the uh, design exceeded our construction budget. So we value engineered the design. In the meantime, council district number one liked the original design, so they asked us to design both projects, complete both projects, get permits for both projects, and therefore we have to pay them for that second design. So we're going out, we're, we're, when we go out to bid, 
we will bid with the value engineer design with an ad alternate showing the original design of the project. Um, this consultant is special because they have not only met and exceeded the anticipated uh, business inclusion participation levels. Uh, the participation levels in their contract, I believe, is 12% minority and 2% uh, women-owned business. Uh, they are, they're pledging 31.9% minority and 13.5% women-owned business. To date, they've already met and exceeded the city's anticipate, anticipated levels by having 15.9% minority and 6.6% um, women-owned business. I've also, I have staff from Avi here, if you'd like to have questions and speak to them regarding the design. Terrific, thank you so much, Rebecca. Um, Commissioner Jacinto. Thank you, Vice President Rodriguez. Rebecca, thank you for the report to uh, Avi and Associates. You know, you're, you've done exactly what we've asked from our board to not only meet and not good faith, but success in reaching out. This is a, 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 such an important, iconic project in an iconic neighborhood of Los Angeles, and it's fitting that we're kind of at the tail end of the Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, and we're celebrating this great design. Um, but to exceed the maybe participation by almost three to, three, uh, 300%, and the, and the Weeby by, by six times is, is incredible. And it shows to our board and the city that it can be done, that we can reach out to diverse groups and we can include small businesses from all walks. It's, I'm incredibly, incredibly excited and thankful that uh, you have succeeded, and not the good fake, but, but the success that can be. So congratulations, thank you so much for, uh, uh, for including a diverse team. Thank you so much, Commissioner Jacinto. And to echo my colleagues' comments, obviously you guys did an outstanding job, both in the design, it's beautiful. Um, I think Chinatown is really, for the, the community within Chinatown is gonna have a, a wonderful um, place for recreation and, and uh, it looks like exercise and just a, a host of opportunities because it is such a landlocked little space and that uh, it's taking this area and really maximizing the space. I think it looks fantastic. Um, and again, to my, to my colleague's point, we really appreciate the efforts in outreach and actually fulfilling it. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's terrific to see that. Um, colleagues, were there any other questions or comments? Seeing none, uh, Commissioner Jacinto moves uh, to approve and I will second that. Uh, is there any objections? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and adopt that item and send it forthwith. Thank you. Agenda item number two, the Bureau of Engineering, Council District 4, recommending the board authorize the city engineer to enter an access and maintenance agreement concerning removing and replacing retaining wall with the property owners of the real property located at 1402 Sanborn Avenue, Los Angeles, California 90027, also known as assessor parcel number 5430-025-018 in connection with the Sanborn Avenue retaining wall replacement project right of way number 33894 subject to the city attorney's approval as to form. Gus Parcero. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Gus from BOE Real Estate Division. My report as stated is to request the board to authorize our city engineer to enter into this uh, access and maintenance agreement with the property owners for the project, this Sanborn Avenue retaining wall replacement project. As mentioned, this is in CD4 in the area of Silver Lake. And for your information, there is no compensation to the owner. So we request the board to approve this uh, authority. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Colleagues, are there any questions? Seeing none, is there a second to my motion to approve item number two? Seconded by Commissioner Jacinto. Any objections to sending that forthwith? We will send that item forthwith. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Agenda item number three, Bureau of Engineering and Council District 15 recommending 
the board authorize a budget increase of $130,000 and approve a revised construction budget of $430,000 in connection with the Terminal Island Water Reclamation Plant Capital Improvement Project Distributed Control System Server Room. Uh, Eddie Ohanian. Good morning. Good morning. Eddie Ohanian, Bureau of Engineering, Environmental Engineering Division. Um, we are requesting your authorization to increase budget for construction project uh, from $300,000 to $430,000 for Terminal Islands Water Reclamation uh, Facility, their uh, DCS, Distributed Control System, uh, upgrade uh, to Honeywell. Bureau of Sanitation, or LA Los Angeles Sanitation, has been transitioning uh, their distributed control systems to Honeywell uh, on all of their uh, wastewater treatment plants or water reclamation plants. Um, this work for this particular uh, facility has started uh, back in September when they realized their main control room was not sufficient for installation of this network server, and uh, they approached Bureau of Engineering to help them and designing an, a, another facility elsewhere in the plant. And uh, as part of this project, um, we investigated and, and came up with a rough mag magnitude of uh, project cost of 300,000 and uh, we received uh, in month of November an approval from uh, Project Oversight Committee uh, to proceed an open work order and conduct the engineering uh, task. As part of this project, uh, no, normally a project at this uh, magnitude, at this size, would take us about 18 months to design and construct. However, we only had nine months to do the project. Uh, the, they gave us a requirement of completing the project by June of this year. By end of the year, December, we completed the design to a 90% review point, and uh, we have um, approached the board and received your authorization of that $300,000 to uh, use the Cisco contract. And um, in January again, we completed the design and submitted to the contractor for preparation of the proposal. And that proposal came to us uh, for a $430,000, which included 20% contingency. The Deputy City Engineer, Kenneth Redd, has approached uh, Commissioner Hacento, received his approval to proceed with the uh, to proceed and, and, and get an approval uh, and uh, award the contract to a Cisco contractor and uh, issue the subtask orders. Since then, project has uh, gone into construction and uh, I met yesterday with the construction manager in preparation for today's presentation and I found out the con construction is on schedule to finish by end of this month. And uh, in, in July, the Honeywell contractor will begin to move the servers into the room and begin their installation. And also, I'd like to uh, inform you that uh, as part of this project, uh, none of the 20% contingency was used, and we intend to finish the project at $358,000. And then uh, this also, also provided an opportunity for the contractor to utilize 18% uh, for the minority business participation and also a 21% uh, for disabled veterans participation. So the, this also increased our uh, percentages for this project. So with this, I conclude my presentation if you have any questions. Thank you. It's quite an accelerated timeline to get this completed and it seems like everything's moved along fairly well. So thank you for that. Are there any questions? Commissioner Jacinto. Yeah, really quick. Thank you. Um, Ed, you know, can you next time put the um, the uh, business inclusion numbers in the board report to show this, those are great. Those are 80% uh, and 20% uh, disabled veterans? Yes. Yes, those are great. So please include them the next time. Of course, I will next yeah. time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other questions, colleagues? For sure. Oh. Uh, is there a motion to approve item number three? Moved by Commissioner Jacinto, seconded by Commissioner Davis. Uh, seeing no objections, that item will be approved. Is there any objection to sending that item forthwith? That item will go forthwith. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend. Agenda item number four, the Office of Community Beautification, recommending the board authorize the Office of Community Beautification to execute a proposed contract amendment with the Hollywood Beautification Team to increase contract ceiling amount in the amount of $50,000 and to authorize the payment from the Keep Los Angeles Beautiful account in the Public Works Trust Fund. Paul Roch. Good morning. 
Good morning, Paul Roch, Director of the Office of Community Beautification. Uh, the Hollywood Beautification Team is one of the nonprofit community based organizations under contract with the Office of Community Beautification, uh, providing various services including graffiti abatement, litter and weed abatement, tree planting, um, etc. Uh, Keep Los Angeles Beautiful is our affiliate program that the Board of Public Works operates uh, as part of the Keep America Beautiful affiliate network overseen by our own Commissioner Rodriguez and um, during the fall winter and spring months Keep LA Beautiful coordinated um, several rain barrel distribution events on a citywide basis uh, where we distributed over 1500 rain barrels um, to residents throughout the city of Los Angeles uh, the Keep LA Beautiful Advisory Board decided to utilize the services of the Hollywood beautification team to help uh, coordinate all the logistics of these events, including the uh, conversion of the barrels that were donated to our office into usable rain barrels, uh, picking up the barrels at the Coca-Cola facility. Uh, Coca-Cola um, had donated the barrels, um, taking them to the uh, OCB warehouse and taking them out to the uh, various distribution events and staffing those events, and also doing a great job uh, in providing a, uh, a training uh, to, to the people that, that came to the events prior to when they got their rain barrel. Um, so this action would authorize the payment to HBT. Uh, we're increasing the ceiling amount of our contract with the Hollywood Beautification Team uh, so that uh, the authority payment can be made based on that contract. Uh, the funds would come out of the KLAB account, uh, which is a part of the Public Works Trust Fund. Thank you, Paul. Um, colleagues, just I, I want to just let you all know how um, I, I know you're all very familiar with the Rain Barrel program and the success of that program, but more importantly, I think it's, uh, it really underscores the value of what we provided in terms of education in collaboration with the uh, Hollywood Beautification Team. Uh, I've just recently discovered that there are additional entities that are going out distributing free rain barrels but they are not poorly they're, they're poorly constructed and there's no education component associated with it and so I think it just really reflects the value of what we had in this in a very uh, small amount of resources that were expended in order to accomplish what we did it's it's a really big it was a big value I think for the residents and for the city and so uh, is there a second to my motion to approve agenda item number four Seconded by Commissioner Davis and Jacinto. Um, that item will be approved. And is there any uh, objection to sending that forthwith? Seeing none, we'll send that forthwith. Thank you so much, Paul. And don't leave. <laughs> uh, agenda item number five is the Office of Community Beautification recommending the board request City Council for authority to, uh, one, extend the term of various Office of Beautification community beautification contracts used for graffiti removal and community beautification services within the city of Los Angeles from three years ending June 20, 30th, 2016 to four years ending June 30th, 2017 and with a one-year renewal option for the following contractors. Central City Action Committee, Koreatown Youth and Community Center, Coalition for Responsible Community Development, New Directions for Youth, Pacific Graffiti Solutions, Gang Alternatives Program, Silmar Graffiti Busters, Hollywood Beautification Team, Northeast Graffiti Busters, West Valley Alliance, Sun Valley Area Chamber of Commerce, uh, Los Angeles Conservation Corps, and Graffiti Control Services. Uh, and authorize the, uh, to authorize the board to execute contract amendments for one year renewal option if determined by the board to be in the city's best interest. Paul Rach, I think I got everything. <laughs> I think so, yeah. And, uh, uh, there is an amended motion which includes graffiti control systems also. They were inadvertently left off the uh, list. Um, so under the authority of the Board of Public Works, we can extend the contracts and amend them up to a period of three years. Um, anything that goes beyond the three-year period, uh, we do need uh, city council approval to, uh, to extend that term. Um, we would normally have gone out to request for proposal this year um, in order to secure new contracts. Um, but due to staff shortages in the Office of Community Beautification and other sort of outstanding issues related to uh, 
uh, the RFP, we just weren't able to pull that together um, in time to, to be able to bring it to the board. Um, so this action would uh, request City Council to, to allow us to extend the contracts for our, uh, an additional year's worth of service with ho hopefully we won't have to do another year after that. Our intent is to go out to RFP uh, sometime this coming year. Uh, we have been working with the Office of Councilman Buscaino and uh, they have agreed to kind of shepherd this through and, and get uh, council approval on this before they uh, go on their, uh, their summer hiatus. Uh, so um, we will be coming back to the board probably uh, in early July with the actual uh, funding recommendations. Uh, this action will only uh, seek council approval to extend the term of the contract and the board will actually approve the funding uh, for those various contracts. Terrific. Thank you, Paul. We know we love our OCB contractors. Um, colleagues, any questions? Com com uh, commission, Hussein, Vice ahead. President, before the uh, commission may decide on this item, just for the record, we are adding two additional contracts to this uh, list. So that's the graffiti control systems, contract number C122764, and graffiti control systems C122616 to the list. Um, in addition, if I can add to Paul, I think he's being very humble in terms of lack of uh, staffing and the shortage of staffing. So because of the financial budgets that we have, we were required to hold uh, vacancies in his shop for a long period of time, almost a little over a year. Uh, we were finally able to be creative and figure out a way to fund two additional staffs that came on board late March 2016, early April 2016. So unfortunately, timing wasn't on Paul's side or the Office of Community Beautifications, but we have shifted uh, and provided the funding to staff this office with two additional uh, individuals. That doesn't mean that the problem is gone. What we did is we just shifted the problem over to another uh, office within our board offices. As you know, the City Council uh, adopted our budget for next fiscal year in which we will have to save an additional $450,000 for staffing. Um, so we will try to figure out how to work that through the system. So although uh, Paul in this place has the resources needed to move forward, we will have to deal with it in a different shop. Thank you for that explanation, Fernando. And the, the two staffers that you've gotten on board have been phenomenal and I think have taken to uh, being just very, uh, they've adapted very quickly and yeah. have hit the ground running and so I think they've done a terrific job. Commissioner Jacinto. Thank you, I just had a quick question. Paul, when do we think we're gonna go out with that RFP? We are hopeful to uh, start the development of that uh, you know, over the summer months and, and probably release it maybe sometime during the fall, October, November, okay. that period. Um, there are a couple of issues we just need to get ironed out uh, prior to actually releasing the RFP. Thank you, Paul, for your great work and staff and just, you know, this is such a core program for LA. It's iconic and all these organizations have hundreds and hundreds of years of, of community work in their youth and people from these different neighborhoods and having yep. come from this sector, you know, it is such a fulfilling thing to be able to see them continue their work and their service of the, to the city. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, is that a motion, Commissioner Jacinto? Moved by Commissioner Jacinto. I will second that, along with Commissioner Davis. Uh, is there any objection? Seeing none, we'll adopt agenda item number five. And is there any objection to sending that forthwith? Seeing none, we'll send that forthwith. Thank you very much. And that is as amended. As amended, excuse thank me. You. Yes, as amended. Thank you. Uh, agenda item number six is, yep, good, Paul, I forgot you're going to be here with us for a while. Uh, Office of Community Beautification recommending the board authorize the Office of Community Beautification to execute proposed contract amendment with the Los Angeles Conservation Corps to raise the ceiling amount of the contract in the amount of $500,000 and to the Bureau of Sanitation to piggyback on the existing contract with the Los Angeles Conservation Corps to make payment for supplemental services. Uh, again, yes, this is a request from the Bureau of Sanitation uh, just to uh, allow them to piggyback on one of our existing contracts with the LA Conservation Corps uh, and to increase the ceiling amount uh, by $500,000. Uh, Bureau of Sanitation has requested this authority uh, for work related to uh, hazardous waste removal uh, program. 
and they'd like to utilize the LA Conservation Corps assistance at some of the various collection events that Bureau of Sanitation hosts around the city. Um, also utilizing them for public outreach, uh, neighborhood canvassing, distributing inf information about the program and the correct way to dispose of these uh, hazardous wastes. Um, also attending community events to uh, pass out that type of information at the events and also doing some uh, school uh, environmental programs to talk to the youth about the proper ways of uh, disposing of uh, household hazardous waste. Okay. Any questions, colleagues? Seeing none, um, is there a motion to approve? Moved by Commissioner Jacinto, seconded by Commissioner Repenning. Uh, that item will be approved and uh, without objection, we'll go ahead and send that forthwith. So thank you very much, thank Paul. Thank you. Agenda item number seven is from the Bureau of Engineering and the Bureau of Street Services. Uh, motion recommending uh, the Bureau of Engineering requesting board approval to begin weekend cl street closures two hours earlier from 9 p.m. Is that correct? Street closure is supposed to be... Okay, 9 p.m. to 7 p.m. related to the Metro Regional Connector Transit Corridor Project, Curtis G. Good morning. I am Curtis G. from the Bureau of Engineering, Metro Transit Division. The Metro Regional Connector Project is a 1.9 mile underground light rail transit system through downtown Los Angeles that will extend from the Gold Line Little Tokyo Station to the 7th Metro Center. On May 6, the Board of Public Works adopted a report that authorized several 55 hour weekend street closures of 1st Street from Central Avenue to Rose Street and Alameda Street from Temple Street to 2nd Street starting at 9 p.m. on Friday and ending 4 a.m. on Monday. Metro and their contractor, RCC, is requesting an earlier implementation time of 7 p.m. for the temporary weekend street closures that are scheduled to occur Friday, June 17, 2016 and Friday, June 24, 2016. These two additional hours would increase each weekend closure for a duration to 57 hours. RCC stated that in order to fully utilize the weekend for the construction of the temporary decking of the intersection of First Street and Alameda, they would like to get an earlier start for saw cutting and demolition of the street. This work is a noisy operation and is not recommended to be performed during nighttime hours due to the proximity of the nearby residential units. Metro has stated that they introduced a new implementation time to the community in community meetings. Community and business outreach is ongoing. Metro has stated to BOE that the community is supportive of the two hour additions to the closure and has not received any obje objections. Therefore, I ask that the board approve the request to implement the temporary 57 hour weekend closure of 1st Street from Central Avenue to Rose Street and Alameda Street from Temple Street to 2nd Street at 7 p.m. for the weekend starting February, I'm sorry, Friday, June 17, 2016 and Friday, June 24, 2016. Thank you. Uh, Metro and RCC representatives are here today if there's any questions. Thank you. Uh, I didn't have any questions. I, I got briefed on this item. Are there any other questions? No? Uh, this item will be uh, moved by Commissioner Jacinto, and I'll second that, and along with Commissioner Davis. Uh, that item will be approved. Is there any objection to sending this forthwith? Seeing none, we'll send that forthwith. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, um, exec Mr. Executive Officer, since we did receive a speaker card on the special, uh, we will uh, hold our... Uh, oral report and uh, close our regular meeting and go into the uh, supplemental that would, be per that would be perfect, uh, Vice President Rodriguez, just for the record, uh, roll call, uh, Vice President R Rodriguez, Commissioner Repenning, Commissioner Davis, and Commissioner Asinto are present. We do have a quorum for the special meeting. We did receive a special uh, speaker card on public comment, but no comment cards for the neighborhood councils. Okay, so we'll go ahead and uh, take this... Uh, Speaker card, Leah Renee. Hi, my name is...
My name is Leah Renee, and I'm going to hand to you each today a packet of um, something that's going on in the Pacific Palisades, Coastal Bluffs, that needs your immediate attention. It turns out um, there is a, uh, a city sewer and a city easement that's so shattered, and I had been bringing the attention to many different people in public works and street services, and I'm, I'm going to pass it around and put it on loop. Um, so you loop and I'm going to give you these packets that shows where it is the track map and for reasons I, they wouldn't put a video down the camera it the smells really bad so one of the um, street services person said the only way you can do anything is if you do your own video and then bring it to the city's attention I videoed that yesterday it's just a short one I will get you the full the full video um, but it's frightening because the wastewater is going right into a crack and disappearing and it turns it out it's in a USG ash U.S. Geological Survey mapped slide plane. And your cities mapped it, and the states mapped it, and it, where it's fractured is right at the edge of the slide plane and down to one street. The city knows that the whole slide plane is moving and put in a slope in kilometer. And you know, you know what happened at Big Rock Mesa, and you know what happened up in Potrero Ranch, and here we are, and I keep bringing you records, and if somebody could come and work with me, if there could be a point person, so that if somebody tells you a different side, I can just keep bringing you the facts and the paperwork, because this is extraordinarily important. It's the slope above Pacific Coast Highway. And it is in the local coastal program, and so that's part of the money that you get from the federal grants to protect this area of the bluff. In 1979, um, the city took money, and the number one issue was the stability and the geological for uh, Pacific Palisades Coastal Bluffs. Thank you very much for the time and public comment. Thank you so much. We'll provide that to our executive officer, and we'll give you your laptop back. <laughs> All right. Um, is there somebody I could get the video to so you could actually see it and review it or somebody I could talk to? You can provide, um, if you can connect with our executive officer, he'll be sure to provide Fernando? you all the, Yes. Oh, great. He'll Thank give you, you so all much. the information. Thank Already you so much. I appreciate much. it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so that concludes uh, general public comment for our special uh, agenda item, and we will take agenda item number one. Uh, the Office of Community Beautification recommending the board authorize the Office of Community Beautification to amend the existing contract with Gang Alternatives Program in the amount of $140,000 to effectively provide supplemental community beautification services in Council Districts 8, 14, and 15. Paul Roch. Good morning. Paul Roch, Director of the Office of Community Beautification here for what I believe is my final board report for the uh, current fiscal year. So. <laughs> um, we received some uh, last-minute uh, funding transfer from the Office of Councilman Buscaino and had a little bit of additional OCB funding uh, available as well. Um, the funding uh, from Council District 15 is to provide additional uh, support for the uh, graffiti removal and litter abatement weed cleanup services provided by uh, Gang Alternatives Program. Uh, we're also uh, throwing in the remainder of the OCB uh, funds just so that we're able to supplement the work they do uh, in a portion of Council District 8 uh, and also a portion of Council District number 14. Uh, the GAP covers the, the largest service area of uh, all OCB contractors and uh, also some of the most uh, in need areas as well. And um, when, when they received funding for uh, uh, the summer youth jobs, they had a tremendous outpouring of interest uh, in, in the various areas they work, uh, in the Boyle Heights area, Council District 8, and also uh, the entirety of Council District 15. And so, um, in addition to supporting the uh, graffiti removal and litter and weed abatement, uh, they will also be able to hire some additional uh, summer youth workers to supplement those programs as well. So, uh, we do request uh, board approval. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Davis. Uh, we had a conversation earlier with District 8 in terms of making sure that the young people from that district were included in the work that we do. Were we able to respond to the concern that they had in terms of including more of the young people from that area in the employment. Uh, that right. So, so through the uh, the summer youth worker program, they have hired 
um, several from CD8 that are actually working in CD8. Um, they're a little bit more able to, you, you know, actually target the areas that they're outreaching to and hire for the summer youth workers. We did do an assessment of the actual full-time employees that uh, GAP employs, and I believe um, that uh, it was one or two that actually reside in Council District 8. A couple of their guys um, reside just, just fairly close to the boundaries of CD8, but just a little bit out. Of, of that particular area, but there were, I believe it was two employees, one of their supervisors and one of their field workers that actually reside in CD8. Thank you, Commissioner Davis. Uh, any other questions? Is there a motion to approve uh, special item number one by Commissioner Jacinto, seconded by Commissioner Davis, that item will be approved and seeing no objection, we will send that forthwith. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paul. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Um, Mr. Executive Officer, that concludes our special agenda? That does. Okay, so we'll resume our regular agenda item and go to uh, item number eight, which is an oral report regarding the semi-annual status uh, report of grant-funded programs and projects. Uh, Shirley Lau, good morning. Good morning, Shirley Lau with the Bureau of Engineering Bridge Improvement Division. Uh, this morning I have a few items to update you on the bridge program and I'll reference the um, blue colored presentation in your handouts. So I'll start off today with some discussion of the Fixing America's Surface Transportation Act, also known as the FAST Act. On December 4th, 2015, President Obama signed uh, the FAST Act into law is the first federal law in over a decade to provide long-term funding certainty for surface transportation infrastructure planning and investment. It authorizes $305 billion over fiscal years 2016 through 2020 for surface transportation projects. Um, in general, the FAST Act maintains focus on safety. It keeps intact the established structure of the various um, highway-related programs in place now and it continues efforts to accelerate project delivery. Based on Federal Highway's estimated state apportionments, California will be getting $3.88 billion on average annually until fiscal year 2020. So how does it relate to funding for bridges? Well, funding for bridges most likely will be coming from a program called Surface Transportation Block Grant Program, and that's in the FAST Act. For California, the funding for, that, for the bridges apportioned to the state will continue to be managed by Cal, uh, Caltrans. Roughly 300 million of those federal funds are made available to local agencies annually. The federal reimbursement rate will continue to be 88.53%, and they generally participate project costs including preliminary engineering, right-of-way, and also the construction costs. Some of the changes to the bridge funding as part of the FAST Act include uh, there will be a new eligible category in the National Highway Performance Program. Uh, in the past, many of our city bridges would not be considered eligible in that program. However, in the FAST Act, some of our bridges may be um, funded through this program. Also, with one of the focus of the act in accelerating project delivery, uh, it encourages states to um, save costs and time by bundling multiple projects together. Uh, we'll get further guidance on how to do that in the future by federal highways. In addition, the act included some new flexibilities in project delivery as it relates to um, environmental review of bridge projects, so we're really looking forward to that flexibility. Uh, that's the short summary of some of the changes as more guidance become available um, and information provided by federal, way, federal highways become available, I can come and brief the board. So now I'll just go back into um, three of our construction projects currently ongoing in the bridge program. So I'll start off with Riverside Drive near Zoo Drive and um, I'll refer to uh, slide number three. So this project we're starting construction shortly. Um, it's to seismically retrofit the bridge. We are widening the structure by 19 feet on the east side of the bridge. We are maintaining the existing four uh, traffic lanes. However, we're adding five-foot wide shoulders on both sides and also adding eight-foot wide sidewalks. On the next page on slide four, this is one of the, uh, a very key component of this bridge project. 
is that while we're retrofitting the bridge, we're constructing a bike path under crossing at the bridge. So this provides connectivity to the LA River bike path. And this is a, a key portion to um, allowing the LA River bike path to continue into the San Fernando Valley. So next I'll talk a little bit about the slide five, which is the Riverside Drive over LA River. And this is the uh, bridge replacement project. This is a view from the river um, of the new bridge that's out there. Construction is approximately 89% complete. We are working on the, uh, bri uh, the bridge approach roadway uh, in progress at San Fernando Road and Figueroa Street. And so we're wrapping up a lot of the civil work in that area. And lastly, on the last slide on page six, the North Spring Street over LA River. Construction is approximately 74% complete. We are in the river. We are working on the river pier arches and also the bridge approach. Um, the picture on the, on the top shows the bridge approach on one side. The deck has already been formed and so we're um, continuing work on that. Um, so this it concludes my report. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Shirley. Uh, any questions, colleagues? No? Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, from uh, Bureau of Sanitation, Arneel Aguilar. Oh, there you are. Good morning, Madam Vice President, Commissioners, Bureau Representatives, City Attorney, Executive Officer. As requested by the board, I'll be presenting sanitation's oral report for uh, December 1st through May 31st, 2016. Commissioners, you should have a copy of the courtesy copy of the grants report for your reference as I go through my oral presentation. LA Sanitation currently has 33 grants totaling 32.5 million as reflected in attachment A of the semi-annual uh, report. Sanitation has three programs, clean water program, solids program, and a watershed uh, program. And each program has some type of front funding source. Under the clean water program, sanitation has received one grant in the amount of 120,000 front funded by the sewer capital fund. There are four, there are four grants in the other program category totaling 1.7 million. These grant programs fall under the other category because planting trees, cleaning the air, and remediating brownfields don't fall within sanitation's core budgetary programs. In the next fiscal year, this program will be um, renamed the Environmental Quality Program. There are 11 grants totaling $10.2 million for the solids program with a variety of front funding sources. Did I say 11? That should be 17. 17 grants. There are 12 grants totaling 20.4 million for the watershed program. These grants are front funded by PROPO, the Sewer Capital Fund, and the Stormwater Fund. Attachment 9 provides the details of these, these grants summarized in Attachment A. Attachment two, or attachment C, two grants were awarded for 536,000 during this reporting period. In attachment D, LA San was denied funding for two projects totaling 3.4 million. In the next attachment, LA San is currently waiting funding decisions or executing a grant agreement for 15 projects totaling 13.7 million as shown in attachment E. And in the last attachment, attachment F, are for pending loan and grant applications for the state water recycling funding program. There's one loan application for 460 million that's in process. And this is for a recycled water purification, conveyance and associated uh, facilities to replenish the San Fernando groundwater basin. The other project, uh, we're seeking uh, a grant of 15 million with the state to upgrade the Terminal Island Advanced Water Purification Facility. 
A board report is expected to be presented for this application later this month. These grants are used to offset special fund costs that would otherwise be borne by our ratepayers. This concludes my presentation and I can address any questions that you may have at this time. Thank you. There we go. Commissioner Penning. Um, I just want to thank you guys uh, for all the work you do in writing and managing grants. Um, I know right now there's a lot of work being done on the state water bond, Prop 1, um, a bunch of applications about to go in for the stormwater uh, pot of funding. Um, the one thing that you know, I, I'm always concerned about is leaving money on the table when we get grants and we either don't have the front funding or we don't have the staff time and we, we lose money um, because we're not able to meet the deadlines. Um, so that's something that um, is an area of interest to me. So if you, um, as you move forward, if you see, if you have concerns about money that you see is not moving, that we've been granted, um, please let me know and I'm always happy to step in and help out and try to figure it out. Absolutely. Uh, in terms of uh, staffing challenges, um, the City Council uh, in, in the current budget, um, fiscal year 15-16, have approved uh, two uh, watershed uh, staff to support the program. And so uh, I know uh, Sharam's group has uh, recently uh, in the process of hiring staff to continue to move those projects forward, particularly in the stormwater program. Uh, for the upcoming fiscal year, um, uh, our section uh, expects to hire an environmental specialist, uh, environmental, environmental specialist, the, um, whether it's a two or three depends on the, the CAO, so that will help in terms of identifying uh, front funding and working through some of the uh, environmental uh, challenges to expedite uh, the application process. All right, that's encouraging. I, I do think that the watershed management group is, they're stretched pretty thin, so uh, I know they have a lot of projects. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, and I know in this particular area, it's one that we're always seeking a lot of grants for because of the lack of funding that we have just readily available to help meet all of our needs in this area, so I want to thank everybody for their work on that. Um, colleagues, were there any other questions for Neil? No, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, my apologies, I missed Jean Edwards for uh, the Bureau of Engineering. Hi, Jean, how are you? Fine, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, good Friday to you all. I am Jean Edwards of Bureau of Engineering. I'm with the uh, Street and Stormwater Division. The division has three programs: the uh, Stormwater Division, the Sidewalks. Uh, I'm sorry, the Stormwater pro uh, Program, the Sidewalk Program, and also the Street Program, which I am the uh, program manager for. Uh, I, this is my first oral report, so thank you. Uh, uh, I was uh, I was promoted uh, as program manager last August on an emergency basis, and and it was uh, permanent permanent last February. Congratulations. Um, and I wanted to give you uh, uh, more of a global report on the program since there are a lot of changes being that the fiscal year is coming upon us. Um, uh, unlike uh, in the recent past, improvements um, of our streets uh, used to be focused on increasing mobility uh, of cars and trucks. But uh, recently with the council uh, adoption of, of the mobility plan 2035, 2035 last August, there has been a uh, reclassification of street designations, uh, street widths and sidewalk widths. And uh, that plan also implemented focused areas uh, which are mapped as networks, including the transit enhanced network, the neighborhood enhanced network, the bicycle enhanced network, and the vehicle enhanced network. In addition, uh, there is a high injury network, which is um, uh, identified in the mayor's executive directive for Vision Zero. Uh, you may know that uh, the Vision Zero goal is to re reduce um, the fatality rate uh, by 20% uh, by 2017 and, and to zero by 2035. And um, <clears throat> all these efforts uh, are, are being conducted through uh, means such as road diets, uh, refuge bump outs and sidewalks, uh, islands, median uh, improvements, and also through traffic control and education to the public. Um, also changing the landscape of street improvement is the concept of complete streets. 
Um, streets are no longer just for movement of traffic, but <clears throat> a place for the public to gather and enjoy re uh, recreationally. Um, there's also gre uh, green streets and great streets. There's a, there's a lot of nomenclature, nomenclature out there. Uh, the focus of Green Street uh, or the Green Street Initiative is to identify project opportunities to capture, filter, and reuse or infiltrate urban runoff. And uh, the Great Street Initiative, uh, launched by the mayor, uh, designates um, um, street corridors in, in each of our 15 council districts. <clears throat> and um, these improvements are, are currently being um, implemented in piecemeal. But, but we do see um, large future projects uh, down the pipeline. Um, there's also the Metro first and last uh, mile user uh, initiative, which is the connectivity of, uh, of uh, the transit uh, systems uh, for the public from, from their place of work or, or uh, residence. Um, so as you can see, um, there's, there's a lot of new movement in, in street improvement and it, it's becoming the new buzzword for public works, um, which means much more work for the Bureau of Engineering and, and our program. Uh, you should have in front of you a handout of our current um, three-year master schedule projects. Um, last year, before the adoption of Mobi Mobility 2035 in August, we had uh, only 41 projects on our master schedule. Uh, since August, DOT has programmed for the Bureau of Engineering to manage an additional 42 projects, uh, doubling our workload. Um, currently, the, the street program that I manage has a total staff of 25 engineers and designers, uh, but due to retirements and promotions recently, uh, we have six vacancies this year to be backfilled, which, uh, so we're operating on a shortfall of 26% uh, uh, in staff resources, a reduction of 20, 20, sorry, 25%. Um, because, because of this shortage and um, to deliver the increased uh, workload, uh, we intend to um, contract consultants using the Bureau of Engineering on-call personal services uh, uh, lists, and we have slated approximately 20 of the new projects already uh, to use consultants. So you'll be seeing a, a lot more of us in, in front of you uh, requesting uh, authority to, to, uh, to hire those consultants. In addition to our programmed work, <coughs> staff is uh, busy working overtime um, on unprogrammed work such as uh, design services for ADA compliant ramps uh, for LADOT and, and the Bureau of Street Services. And we've also been using overtime recently um, at the request of the mayor's office and the council offices uh, for grant application support. Um, we do um, a lot of estimating of, of, of civil improvements for those grants. And in some cases, um, we are uh, the grant applicant. Uh, recently, we've been overloaded with uh, working on the express lane grants and the AHSC grants or the affordable housing and sustainable communities grants. And we also anticipate spending staff resources in, in the future for the upcoming 2017 Metro Call of Projects. So that concludes my report. Any questions? Thank you, Gene. Uh, any questions, colleagues? No? Thank you, Gene. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank you for your report. Thank you. And uh, from the Bureau of Street Services, we have James Quigley. Oh, good morning. James good morning. Quigley, Bureau of Street Lighting. I apologize for my lack of a handout here. This was fairly brief. Um, the Bureau of Street Lighting has both uh, Bureau of Street Lighting initiated projects and we do a lot of support work for ATP, DOT, et cetera. So um, projects initiated by the Bureau of Street Lighting, uh, Lemon Grove Lighting Phase 2 is a uh, budget of 325000 for the de design and construction of 25 street lights bounded by Santa Monica, Western, Lemon Grove, and the Hollywood Freeway. Installation of these lights is going to improve the illumination levels and improve safety for pedestrians, bus, stop, bus riders, and motorists. Uh, number two of this is Historic Filipino Town Phase 2, a uh, project funded by uh, Measure R for the design and construction of an installation of 24 pedestrian lights at eight different bus stops. And these bus stops are along uh, Temple Street intersections of Robinson, uh, Van Dome, uh, Occidental, and Union Ave. And these lights are going to have a, an artistic component. 
and are going to be especially designed specifically for this. You know, the installation of these lights, once again, will improve uh, pedestrian and bus rider safety. There's another component of this project which is funded through the Department of Transportation, which is going to be basically designed and constructed simultaneously uh, with this project. And that is, uh, you know, on our other list, basically categorized with um, the other projects here. So the, the grant-funded projects by other city agencies that include a Bureau of Street Lighting component uh, currently we're working on 32 projects that are initiated by other city agencies. Uh, in total, these uh, projects have a lighting improvement budget of 26 million allocated for the design and construction of 1,600 street, bus, and pedestrian lights. Currently, these projects are in various stages of planning, design, Prop 218, and construction. Once again, the constituents in these project zones will benefit from modern LED lighting system that provides uniform lighting on the roadways, sidewalks, walkways for a safer nighttime environment. Um, and there's, like I said, there's 26 of these in varying capacities that we just work in, in support of, of other city agencies. So that's basically what I have if there's any, any questions. And of course, I can forward um, a handout if anybody requests it later. Sure. Thank you so much, James. I know Commissioner Jacinto is very excited about historic Filipino town. Uh, Commissioner, Has <laughs> Commissioner Jacinto. Thank you, uh, Vice President Rodriguez. Jim, thank you for sitting in on those meetings for BSL. Um, really helping the mayor to realize the mayor's vision of a livable and sustainable city that has this great diversity. And so we, we have to understand that the project in historic Filipino town is a project of, of national significance. The nation's first ever street lights designed with this um, aesthetic that speaks to diversity. And it's a great suite. I want to thank you, Fabian, uh, Clinton, uh, Norma, Ed, everybody in the Bureau for just uh, coming to, to do this pedestrian bus safety uh, lighting project that will high, highlight high fi so thank you, Jim. <laughs> thank you, Commissioner Asinto. Um, I no other questions. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Uh, those oral reports will be received. Uh, Madam Executive Officer, have we cleared the desk? Yes. Okay, we stand adjourned. Thank you very much.